Good afternoon and welcome to the latest Energy Heroes workshop, Saving Money and the Planet Through Primary Maths. You're all very welcome. The session will be around 45 minutes long and will be in two main parts. Firstly, an interactive element where we hope we can um, engage everyone in a bit of discussion and inspire each other with our ideas. Um, and then followed by a brief description of some of the resources that we have available that we can share with you and hopefully support you with your great energy saving work. So to start off our session, we'll show a short video and ask you to think about the topics involved and how they have a bearing on your life in school. And we'll discuss this after watching it. A report by the UK Met Office says the impact of climate change is already being felt across Britain with increased rainfall, sunshine and temperatures. Rebecca Morell has more. Dramatic changes in our skies. In 2020, the UK experienced a year of extremes, from storms in February which caused chaos across the country, to a summer heat wave where temperatures sweltered above 34 degrees for six consecutive days and rain in October, with the UK's wettest day on record. It's all charted in an annual assessment of the climate, which found the UK's getting wetter, warmer and sunnier. We can see very clearly from our observations that the UK's climate is already changing. So climate change isn't just something that's going to happen in 2050 or we need to worry about towards the end of the century. We are seeing this very clearly in our observations now. The report compared the most recent three decades with the 30 years before and found that on average the UK was 0.9 degrees hotter. For rainfall, the country was an average of 6% wetter and 2020 was the eighth sunniest year recorded in the last 100 years. How do buildings affect the environment? Buildings have a big impact on the environment. The construction and renovation of buildings uses precious natural resources. Then, when in use, buildings are responsible for a significant proportion of all our carbon dioxide emissions. Energy used in the construction and use of our homes and other buildings accounts for around half of the UK's total carbon dioxide emissions. Under the Climate Change Act 2008, we have a legally binding target to reduce these emissions by at least 80% by 2050. Globally, it's a similar picture. Buildings account for around 35% of resources, 40% of energy use, consume 12% of the world's drinkable water, and produce almost 40% of global carbon dioxide emissions. Trish Gibson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. 6.7 million households across the UK already live in fuel poverty, exactly. with a current cap price of £1,971. Will the Leader of the House make a statement setting out if she believes an energy cap rising by another £600 helps householders such as those in my constituency of North Ayrshire and Arran who already cannot afford to pay their energy bills, as well as householders who will shortly find themselves added to these soaring numbers in fuel poverty as a direct result of this new increase in the price cap? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just uh, looking at those three sort of video clips, there's one on global warming, one on buildings and one on fuel poverty. Um, I'm just wondering if there's um, anything you've noticed about that, how, how that impacts your work in schools or anything that's come up um, with your pupils. So, so I'll just go around the screen. Um, if I start with Christopher. Sorry, you're muted, Christopher. Thanks. Thanks. I've also got noisy children here, so <laughs> it's best that you don't listen all the time. Um, yeah, so uh, just let everybody else know, I'm not a teacher, but I do go into schools and support young people, primary school uh, children, with energy saving initiatives. Um, so what I've noticed out, out of there is that 
the, these numbers get banded around 2035, 2050, but actually it's now. And it is a great opportunity for us all to be involved in schools right now, sort of gleaning all of these resources and putting these activities in, into play. Um, we do, so I, re I represent a community energy company. Um, we're a cooperative. So we're, we're the softer side of, of, of a company. And we're, we're actually funded by Essex County Council who are pushing forward lots of initiatives in, in different stratas. But interestingly, linked in with the schools, when we go and see the schools, we then go into their households and we actually install energy saving mechanisms in their house on, on, on the day. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, Ian, have you noticed these issues? How are they impacting um, pupils at your school? Yeah, we, we've um, set up an eco club um, where students look at ways that they can save energy and, and hold us teachers to account. Um, break times and lunch times, walking around telling us to turn lights off and things. Um, so, so that they're very excited by all that but um it's, tr it's trying to find ways that you can engage them in a meaningful way um because they'll soon get bored of telling you we need to turn lights off and, and things like that so uh we've looked to doing battery collection points for people at home we've we've managed to get hold of some um trees to plant and things like that so um we're just kind of starting to to get going with it really and and, and looking for ways that we can do things that are meaningful to the children so they feel like they're having a positive or, or are having a positive impact on, on the environment really. That's great Ian, thank you. I did just um, disappear for a little while then, but I'm back. Um, yeah, I think an eco club is, a, is definitely a really good way to get started um, on these things, especially looking at um, energy efficiency in, in your school buildings. And uh, yeah. the pupils are pupils are always really really keen to have their voice heard and to try and make an impact. So yeah, yeah that's we, a, that's we have recorded. Um, sorry, we, we've tried to record the um, energy usage as well across a number of months to to see whether they've had a, a, an impact. But um, w with the size of the school and the complications of energy prices and and all that and. And then holidays <laughs> it's very difficult to yes. to record and, um, what their impact is with the prices going up in the autumn it's it's really hard for you to compare um yes. price wise it's it's useful to look at the energy the, the amount of energy you've used rather than yeah. the money um, it, uh, do you have do you use your energy performance certificate that's quite a good uh, one yes. to yeah. yeah to look at and compare with um right i'll just move on thank you for that ian i'll move on to katrin um if katrin would like to put anything in the chat or do you want us to move on because i know you're uh, kind of busy as well let's have a look uh christopher's mentioned making energy eaters activity and twinkle and better planet schools resources in the chat so uh we're going to share the chat with everybody afterwards so uh anything people want to add in that would be fantastic um i know katrin's got um children around with her as well so uh we'll maybe um maybe move on have we got someone called Catherine? is Catherine there yes i'm here Hi Catherine, um, we're just Apologies, discussing... I was late, I was in a meeting. That's right, don't worry, it's great to have you here. Um, just wondering if you've noticed um, any impact of global warming or fuel poverty or discussions of energy efficiency within school buildings? No, not, not, but, not, but, well, not particularly. We're, I am um, in North Belfast, so um, no, not, not particularly at all, no. Something that you'd like to get the children involved in more yeah well yeah if if it's at all possible there's you know there's lots going on so really i'm just on to find a little bit of information you know find out a few things about what what it is basically and you know things like that yeah, I, I know great. 
I had no insight into what I was going to do or what I was using. I just thought it sounded interesting and I would like to hear more about it. Brilliant. So you'll you'll probably get a good sort of introduction to some some great ideas here, and also okay. we're hoping Perfect. that the, the other people on the on the call will um will um yeah share, we're sharing lots of ideas as well. So brilliant, great yeah, to perfect. have you here. Thanks. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, so um, I think we'll move on to the next part of our activity. If you've got a paper and pen. Around, uh, handy nearby we're going to focus on using climate content videos images and data to inspire lessons so we're going to play a little bit of a game make a competition of it see who can come up with the most ideas and it really doesn't matter what quality the ideas are we just want lots of them so we're going to show you two images one at a time you'll have two minutes on the image to just jot down as many ideas as you can think of for anything to do with um, supporting children in schools uh, getting getting children to think of um, activities, lessons they can do, if you can think of lesson objectives, lesson plan ideas, uh, questions, just anything that pops into your mind, list as many as you can. Um, we'll have two minutes on each image. Hopefully coming up very soon i'm going to join in because i haven't really thought about this bit yet so i'm in the game okay two minutes i'll turn my sound off Okay, time's up. I didn't realise how long two minutes was <laughs> until I did that. Okay, um, how many? I'll tell you how many I've got. You can tell me if you beat me. Um, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. I think nine. I think I've got nine ideas. Anybody want to tell me how many they've got? Uh, maybe we could put our top top three ideas into the chat um some of my ideas are to do with maths and some are not so if i just go well i, I, I think i'd like to hear some of yours first because otherwise uh i might have the same as you so who'd like to who'd like to share something um ian are you muted sorry i am muted yeah um i, I found that quite hard really i was trying to think about how i could use that with the children um they're always fascinated perhaps more um savings on energy with the savings on money so you would you would maybe have to to look at what does that mean in terms of what they could save per year or per wash how many washes per year and you know that'd be a real maths lesson investigation um how much would that give you in a year saved and then i always find grab an argos catalog and see what you could buy with your savings 
That's brilliant. That, yeah, really get them inspired. Yeah, kind of grabs their grabs their attention then, because then it gives them a they can visualise what they're actually saving by turning that down. And uh, and then I they guess you could have, differentiate it by how much you can save in a week, then a month, and then and then a year, can't you? Yeah, and, and there's going to be a certain amount of you have to make up a few figures in terms of what what you provide them with, but the, the idea is there that they'll be saving turning the temperature down is saving actual cash isn't it so um and, and then the other one i had was you can maybe look at some if you've got a washing machine in school you could you could get a few t-shirts and do sort of a scientific experiment with some different uh stains on the tops and see what the results are of the different temperatures and you know something like that <laughs> Uh, and then I drew a blank, really. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's great, Ian. Thank you for starting us off there. Um, anybody want to go next? Shall we go Christopher next? Yeah. Hi. OK, so the last thing I did was working with data capture. So looking at the thermometers, um, having those in class. And there's that thing again that Ian was mentioning about energy equals money, and it can be you know, establishing a baseline of the energy use and the cost, and then, okay, we've got a baseline, how are we going to improve it? The visuals on that would be pie charts, bar charts. It, it's fairly simple to do, and I think that's a really important thing. These things have got to be fairly, and teachers are really, really busy, and um, it, it helps if it's just quick, and that works, that works for us. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you for that. Um... Did Katrin manage to get anything done there? I know you're, you're just listening in, but shout up or add to the chat if you want to put anything in there. Um, I um, I went down a different road of how many if you, how many washes do they do in a week? So if you know if you reduce the amount of washes, how much would be saved even by one? What difference it would make? And also, what other methods could you use so that you weren't were using the washing machine to do your washing? you know, things like that. Could they think of any other ways to do it? Different energy saving ways of doing it, yeah. I like it. Very good. Um, I had a little play with um, just thinking about the numbers as well. So you could, if... Um, if you're looking at math objectives, you could look at the difference in the numbers. You could look at counting in tens or twenties, forwards and backwards. Um, you could look at finding um, percentages that one was 55 percent so uh, one of the things we do in our energy heroes program uh, in lesson one is we look at finding 10 percent and then if you found 10 percent how would you find one percent how would you find 20 percent how do you find five percent so um, there's all that in there as well uh, and then i got involved in in lots of ideas for english as well because you could do advertising persuasive language and <laughs> other things but uh, we are focusing on maths today so i'll bring it back to that Wonderful, thank you. Um, right, the second picture then, we'll have two minutes on the second one and see what we come up with. I'm worried that this one might be harder. <laughs> Let's see.
Right, that was interesting. Now, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Um, right, what do we get for that one? Any Anybody want to chip in? Okay, I've got one. Um, so working with, with the maxim, keep the person and not the room, that kind of brings the awareness about, well, how can we actually start to work on ourselves rather than the expensive issue of heating huge halls and huge, huge rooms in schools. Um, one of the things that I'm aware of is, is um, the electrification of, of heating that's coming in within the next 10 years. Um, and so we, we basically organized an activity to go around counting the watts. So the watts of each appliance and then bringing some awareness as well during that journey that learning journey of understanding that do you really need these really big wattage things and, and just adding them all up. And again, getting back to Ian's point was um, referencing that, that watts means money. So low watts means low money. So that, that's another activity I've used. Thank you. Um, Catherine's just mentioned uh, in the chat, um, the idea do i need to put it in the wash so they could reduce the amount of washes in a week and liz has said yeah reducing use is so important and that's one thing we we tell the children when we go into schools that every everybody can reduce the amount of energy they use you know everyone's got the power to do that so that's wonderful thank you um anybody else got anything on that one um i did an experiment not this year um with the camera remember what year it was and we um put the thermometer on the radiator in class and then put damp clothes on it and they were able to see the drop in temperature because the radiators then heat your clothes um, and it continued you know the drop in temperature of the heat coming out of the radiators because they're going into your clothes so but not related to what you said but it worked really well it was quite shocking to see that for the children were quite shocked to see that you know the temperature drops as soon as you put something on your radiators so covering them yeah and we mentioned yeah. uh, we radiator foils were mentioned before as well about a way to um to get the most out of your energy from your radiators and that's one of the um one of the lesson plans we've done before where we're teaching them to put foils behind their radiators um so yeah making the most out of um the energy they're using and reducing as much as possible yeah, yeah good really good um i was i was thinking again just in terms of having a maths head on think just thinking about the the maths of it that you could um you could look at the financial savings per month or even per year and then exponentially how much that is um, and again the co2 savings per year how much two years how much three years so just just doing lots of little maths activities related to that very good okay um i think we're now going to move on to having a quick look at the Energy Heroes programme. Um, we are we are based in the north of England and our fu current funding means we can only deliver to um, schools in Yorkshire, the North East and uh, North Lincolnshire. Um, but our resources are available there for anybody who's been on our workshop. So um, for, first of all, we're going to look at the two different areas, um, examples from different student areas, the maths lessons involved in the Energy Heroes programme and then our website and other resources. So how can the Energy Heroes programme save money? Um, our maths programme consists of six lessons. The first lesson, um, well, the first lesson we deliver ourselves in school and one of the things the children do is they have um, a weekly energy monitoring sheet for school use and they just keep coming back to that keep adding the data and looking at what that's telling them we then um they send we send log books home at the end of the first lesson for pupils to record their either their electricity or their gas readings um and they also do a home energy audit at the end of that first lesson where they look at how many lights they've got, what kind of bulbs they are. They list the appliances in their rooms and um, how many radiators they've got. 
They then bring this information back into school for lesson two and they start to count the cost. So they look at um, how many appliances there were, they find the cost for each appliance from this worksheet and then work out how much that is costing them over the over the week. Um, lesson three is then all about the lights and the light bulbs. Um, we do an energy audit where the children go around school and look at the different kind of light bulbs they've got, but they're also looking at these lights at home. They learn how many watts, kilowatts per hour each light bulb uses, and they do lots of calculations based on that. Uh, lesson four is called Evil Standby, and they this is a practical lesson. They make a, a, a kind of little sort of anti-hero character which they take home and it's used to highlight the how much energy is wasted through uh, leaving appliances on standby. Lesson five is called Be a Saver where they look at the mean and range of all the data they've collected over those last five weeks um, and they, they just go into a lot of detail, a lot of calculations and then they have a Be a Saver checklist to make sure they're doing everything they possibly can to save energy at school and at home. Uh, lesson six is called Magical Maths. There's lots of different activities in this. This is just an example of one of them. It's a matching pairs activity and it consolidates the learning they've done over those six weeks. So uh, that then leads me on to the other um, resources we've got. So if we share with you our website, um, you'll see, we'll just give you a, a sort of brief overview of the resources that are on there. You'll see the six maths lessons under the all resources tab in the middle there. We will email all this out to everybody. So you'll have um, a link to all our resources. So you've got the six maths resources at the top in the blue lozenges, lessons on the left, resources on the right. And then underneath that, you've got other curriculum resources. There are two English ones, four science ones. Yeah, so if you when you when you click on one, you'll see that it, um, which age range it's designed at for. So some are some are low key stage two, some are key stage two, some are key stage one. Four science ones, um, two geography ones, one DT, the DT ones. There's only one of them, but there's a lot in there, um, and it can last over quite a few weeks as well. And then there are five art um, lessons or, or topics rather. Um, three of them are 2D and two of them are 3D. Underneath that, you've got two cross curricular resources which are linked to um, critical thinking um, and they can be used across any of those subjects. And then at the bottom, you've got extra curricular resources. So if you've got any clubs, uh, in school, I'm, I'm thinking some of these might be things that Christopher might have done with some of his uh, some of his groups, but uh, yeah, just other other things to do, games to play, and things to make. So those are our resources. We will share with you um, our website, um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. Actually, I'll come back to that at the end. Um, but yeah, we'll be sending you an email with lots of information in. So, uh, I just kind of want to finish really before we um, highlight what's going to be in that email by saying thank you to everybody for coming. We do try and keep these sessions fairly short because we know how busy everybody is, but I uh, really appreciate that you've joined in and the, the ideas that you've shared. We will share the chat with everybody. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm feeling happy and inspired and really hopeful that we can all carry on the good work so thank you for being here um can i ask it, uh, everybody else to just sort of take turns to say goodbye and tell us anything you might have felt inspired by i think i'm still on not on mute so i'll just say excellent thank you very much it is really inspiring working with um people up and down the country and the resources that you're willing to, to share, I can only just say thank you very much. Um, it, it's great to have a pick and mix actually, and, and, and just work with other people's enthusiasm. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Ian. Oh, Catherine, Ian, Hi. Catherine. Thank, <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to say thank you so much and for apologies again for being late. 
But thank you so much. Um, I definitely got um, some good ideas from people from um, that, obviously, which will play a bit more rubric within the classroom. But um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Ian. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good idea to just with a little bit of thought, it doesn't take a lot to you, you get a few math lessons out of data to do with energy and just raise that awareness. I think it's a you know, really good idea and quite quite simple, really. Um, yeah, so I'll definitely be, be having a look at some of that in math lessons going forward. Yeah, I think I think sometimes it can just seem so such a big daunting subject, can't it? But actually, there are so many things you can do within it. Yeah, and you get locked into your schemes of work in school and things, and and actually you can teach the same uh, objective, uh, but but have an energy focus with that as well. So, yeah. One of the one of the um, the feedbacks we get most often is how purposeful this maths is. That the pupils can really see why they're doing it, and it's it's making a sense of the or, you know all the things they've learned. They're then practicing it in a in a context yeah. rich subjects so. you always want to put your maths into real world uh experience and uh, situations so it's just perfect it's it's made for that isn't it yeah wonderful yeah. thank you Ian. Catherine, do you want to add anything <laughs> perhaps you might be busy <laughs> okay right so i'll just finish off by then by letting you know that um We'll send you an email containing the PowerPoint from today's session, um, a link to our website, our social media channels, um, and links to the uh, to other climate resources that we um, highly recommend, um, as well as hopefully the chat that's uh, that we've had here today. So yeah, thank you everybody. Oh, well, because it's because it's live, recording live as well.